Hey guys, it's, it's Elliot. Guess who's still going through a bit of creative block? Uh, let me tell you, he's in this room. I've been trying to design all day and I haven't done anything. It's, it's, it's been terrible. Not, nothing's, nothing's working for me right now. It's really, uh, it's really starting to get to me. And if there's one thing that I simply can't do while going through creative block, it's recording a video of me designing because I simply can't, because I can't design, I'm, I've already told you, I can't, I can't design. But I had an idea. Oh, I, I had an idea for a video though. And I really, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. this is about? You clicked on the title. Of course you know what this is about. And the stats from last week's video suggest that you really like it when I sit on this couch and talk my ass off about design. So let's move over there and talk about some niche design styles that I'm extremely passionate about. I'm just going to say that the term style is a very loose term, okay? Some of these styles that I have, uh, uh, just, it, it feels like I've just put some words through a random word generator. At the end of the day, this is a comedy video, okay? You've probably seen some design style or trend videos before and you see the usual, the minimalism, 3D design, things that are just so broad, okay? We're going niche. We're going really specific here. So without further ado, the first style I would like to talk about, of course, is minimalism. <laughs> Come on. That was the joke one. The real one is Australian fish and chips shop branding. I think the whole kind of idea for this video came from when I was like walking in the shops the other day and I walked past my local fish and chips sh store and I, I, I looked at the sign and they recently renovated it and it was like, it was one of those signs that you look at it and you go, this wasn't done by a graphic designer, but someone has an eye for design, you know? Like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like there are some things that are so specific, like you can tell, there are certain things that people do that you can tell that you're like, okay, someone has been paid to do this. There is a certain level of, I hate the word, but professionalism to it, especially for like restaurant branding and stuff. Like a lot of them look the same and to really stand out, I think in the restaurant kind of branding industry, like you gotta be, you gotta, you know, have like a real, real kind of thing going for yourself, you know? But there's something so effortless about Australian fish and chips store branding specifically that I can appreciate so much. The, the one near me is absurd. Beautiful script font, beautiful choice of colors. And it's like got this really nice vintage feel to it. And then there's this place called Out of the Blue. They have this massive like fish, like a blue groper as their kind of like logo. And it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like this beautiful cartoony design. Since I've been a kid, they've had that same logo and it is timeless, truly timeless. A Clovelly fish and chip store has made a timeless logo. Can you believe it? Burr's lettification. This style is specifically in reference to people whose designs have been heavily influenced by legendary up and coming graphic designer, Emma Burr's, AKA Burr's Letters. If you've been on Instagram in the last like six months, you've seen this style, okay? It's everywhere right now. It's hot, 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 hot. It's kind of characterized by the freeform pen tool, uh, which is a, a tool that you can use in Photoshop that I've used in past videos before. Um, and it's like quite an obvious tool when used. Like it creates this really nice kind of pixelized, like it's, it's it can, you can only really do it in Photoshop because of how it's just not a vector, right? And you look at it and you go, this is not a vector. This is like a really rough kind of outline, but that's the charm of the tool, right? And Burr's Letters is like one of the, at least from my years on Instagram, one of the first people I've seen use that tool as like the core of their work, right? Like it, I'm sure you could use it for many, many kind of things, but like using it almost as your paintbrush, right? I've never seen that stuff before. It feels like the tool itself is so far away from any of like the classic design rules. You're making type without the type tool. It's like hand drawn, but it's with a mouse, you know, like on the trackpad or whatever. Like it's, it's so like it embraces how absurd it is to be using that tool for type and to use it as like a, a tool in general, like use that tool, see how you go with it. And then like build and develop on that into your own kind of way of designing. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about at the end of the day, you know, finding finding what what feels good to you, what feels true to you. And that's that's originality. Is it? Maybe vintage animal lamps. I see these a lot on my Instagram page. My Instagram shopping tab has kind of in become exclusively uh, animal lamps. Uh, they're quite popular, it seems, because whenever I look to see if I can buy one, it always seems to be sold out. 
Why am I getting advertised these things that are already sold out? I don't know. It makes me feel really sad. So uh, I don't, and I don't like feeling sad. You see a lot of toucan ones. That seems to be the most popular, but there's also uh, this uh, puppy lamp, this dog, dog lamp. What these are is just, they are exactly what I want out of my furniture. Bold colors, mainly primary colors because, you know, that's, that's what, that's who I am. And like the idea behind it, you know, taking this, these heads of these animals and putting them on lamps and making a lamp out of these animals is just something that I don't think uh, has ever been done before. Will, will ever be done ever, uh, ever done. It will, never, it, will, it will ever done, you know? Looney Tunes vibes. Okay, this is an interesting one because I don't know what I would call the style apart from that it like has a general sense of like, I, I had this one post in my save tab, which was like a still from a Bugs Bunny cartoon. And it looked exactly like all the designs that I've kind of been seeing in this style. And it has that nice like, washed color palette like it's almost pastel it's like they're flat they're not super bold but they like it feels vibrant it feels very colorful and bold but it's they're just not and a really flat 2d illustration style very much reminiscent of like early cartoon uh but mainly looney tunes like that's the specific thing it's like it's not disney it's looney tunes and then some people kind of just like stick to making characters out of that style which i really like or they mess up the medium they do different things like that but then others like take that style and use it more as a building block for shapes and like abstract kind of art within a poster, which I think is awesome, right? One of my favorite accounts on Instagram is this one here called uh, the Zingy Bee. And their style is the perfect blend between this like brutalist, uh, postmodern, if you, if you will, graphic design style. Uh, and then that like cartoonish element that sneaks in and all of this stuff. Like they did a 36 days of type project. Uh, and this one here, like this letter B, right? Like it's very much the letter B. It's got like these little graphic elements and like the, the, the little sides of it. But then it's like this cartoony kind of shapes going on there that I just adore. I absolutely adore them. And then it, it's throughout all of their work and it's it's truly fantastic. Casetify featured artists. All right, funny, funny tr uh, style. This is definitely not a style at all. This is a collection of things that you can buy. The medium of phone case design is a very interesting thing. I don't think many people in their day-to-day -day graphic design jobs get the chance to do uh, phone case design. Like it's quite it's quite niche on its own, I would say. The thing with phone case design, maybe if you had a phone in, in years prior, was that like you could never really find a case that looked good and was protected. This sounds like an ad. I'm, I'm literally, uh, this is not a case to fire ad. I do have a collection with case to fire, but what I'm, I appreciate I appreciate that Casetify have made like, you know, you can, you can get cases that are really good and that also look good. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to say. This is not an ad. They get like a, a bunch of artists and graphic designers, especially graphic designers, uh, from the scene, you know, from the community that I'd like to call myself a part of, right? Like they, they find these graphic designers in the community and then they make like, you get, you get a whole collection of them and then you get the royalties for it, right? They got me in like April of 2020. It's been like two and a half years now of uh, working with them for my collection. And like, they have like 50 plus graphic designers under their belt now. Each of them, you know, get to spend the time to work on this like little collection, get their, turn their posters into phone cases, create these completely new ones and all this stuff. Like it's a really cool opportunity. And I remember like when I got the email, I was like over the moon, okay. Like, couldn't believe it that like I was going to have my work on phone cases. Um, and the fact that people could like have this physical thing and they could kind of on their phone, the thing that they use the most every day, like that's such a cool thing. And the creative freedom that they give you is so cool as well. So seeing like these other artists also get that chance and like seeing the cool things that they come up with, I find is really inspiring, right? Like everyone has their own kind of, it's like a, I don't know. I just think it's cool. You get these little collections and people can collect different ones and yeah, it's beautiful. NBA teams, social media. Okay, let's talk about this. I'm a big NBA guy. I've been a big NBA guy for a long time now. Uh, as an Australian, it's a very weird thing to follow an American sport. But when you receive games like, you know, NBA 2K, Madden, for example, very easy as a kid to kind of dive into that and, and explore that world. Try any of the Australian video games that are sports related. They are, uh, there was like one good game, it was like Rugby Live 08 or something, and it was fantastic. Everything else has sucked. I'm a big Washington Wizards fan. What can I say? I really like the colors, red, white, and blue. I'm not an American Patriot or anything like that. 
I do like primary colors though, so it was expected. What I find interesting about NBA team social media is that there's 30 teams, 30 teams that all have their own way of posting on social media, right? Especially during the season, if you see the way that they post final scores, scores by the quarter, different highlights and stuff like that, they all have the thing. They'll post a photo, they'll post the score, but the, the framing is different. So I find it super interesting when teams kind of like take a risk. Usually, especially recently, usually teams will have like a, a kind of like wide, flat, like short font as their main thing. I guess it just fills space more, uh, but teams aren't really taking too many design risks. But the Lakers, of course, the team with the most money, I imagine, stand out to me at least. The Lakers use a serif font. Okay, in a in a sport dominated by these long sans serif fonts, the Lakers use a serif. I'm not a like I'm not like a Lakers fan or anything. I, I, I'm not even the you know it's not that it's not that big of, of a move. At the end of the day, I just find it interesting how teams kind of like have to find a way to stand out and and try and like you know because at the end of the day they're trying to grow their social medias right the more people who see their posts the more people who are going to buy tickets it's all part of their business so like the way that they can kind of like have this really cool branding is such an important thing it's definitely a job that i'd like to do one day as well it's um a very cool uh kind of gig i think that kind of sports design style thing i think the wizards will have a really good season as well uh christos Pazingas and bradley bill have never been seen together on court and I know that those 3D billboards at Times Square, what can I say? I'm a sucker for a spectacle and an advertising spectacle. Wow, what a perfect blends, blend of theater, graphic design, and uh, New York, I guess. I've never seen one of these in person. Makes me really sad that I haven't. I'm sure that when you see one, you've seen them all, right? But for me, I will sometimes search up on YouTube 3D billboard just to have a look. I think they're absolutely fantastic. There was this one between Balenciaga and Fortnite. Unreal. There was like this dog trapped in this box. How cool is that? I don't think it gets any cooler. New Yorker tote bags. I don't know if this is a universal thing or not, but I get so many ads about the New Yorker and like specifically like, hey, if you sign up for this, like it's like $2 or something for a free trial, like a $2 trial, I guess, we will send you this tote bag. And they change the tote bags so often, and I really like my tote bags. They must be making like a huge loss on the tote bags. I reckon they're making money on people not like not canceling their subscription. That's the only thing that I can think of. The two that I have in particular are these like this, this nice like hot pink one and this yellow one. Beautiful illustrations on the front as well. I'd gladly be seen in public wearing one of these. Not only do I get the status of someone who reads, I also get to wear around a fashionable tote bag that has a bold color attached to it that can match most things that I own. That's really cool. I've got a yellow shirt on. Walking around with the yellow tote bag is a huge statement. I'm going double colors. Why wouldn't I want to do that, right? That's awesome. So that's uh, one of the many pluses of having one of these tote bags. Now, Jean water bottles. This is similar to Casetify, right? Like now, Jean isn't really the, the, the brand kind of pulling all of these collaborations together that you might see, but what they are is a, a, a type of water bottle. And I guess you can buy them in bulk and put prints on them like Gildan shirts. Maybe? I'm not in the water bottle production market, but a lot of very cool looking companies are, and they make some very nice looking water bottles. I have an A24 Brulio Amato Nalgene collaboration bottle, and it is one of my favorite things. It is one of my most prized possessions. This is my this thing gets me everywhere, right? So much water can fit inside that bottle. You know how much water can fit inside that bottle? Like a gallon or something. I don't know what the conversion is. Like a liter? Less than a liter ounces or something. But you see a lot of like really cool like fashion brands kind of come out and release these, right? And they just always turn out so well. This bottle is built for good design. I genuinely think that. You've got ones that come in like light green, light orange, neon colors and all this kind of stuff as well. It's just fantastic. And uh, I can see why these kind of cool companies keep releasing them because people will keep buying them. I imagine that I would love to design one today. Would you have a Elliot is a cool guy bottle? Maybe it could have a design chef on. I don't know. I got I no ideas for merch. No, I don't think that'll ever happen. Type specimens. Type specimens are some of the coolest things out there. Um, I just got my first one, which is this little book up here, this PP32 book there. That's the Pangram Pangram type specimen. Um, and that thing is huge. Like, look how many pages are in that, right? That's a big book. And like a lot of them are just, well, the entire thing is just like examples of how type can be used. I find type specimens interesting, not only from a design perspective, but from like a writing perspective as well, right? Because it's so interesting how people choose to display type. 
Type is one of those things. To display it well, you need to put it in like a sentence. You need to choose words. You can't just put letters together and then go, here's my font, right? Most people, you want to have like kind of the sentence, quick brown fox, blah, blah, blah. But people like to put twists on those, whether it be like city names, different foods, like recipes even, like a bunch of stuff that you can, you can do with it. Uh, I find it always to be really cool and I'd love to own more. Theater season design. I would argue that the reason I got into graphic design in the first place is because of theater design, right? I'm a theater kid at heart. What can I say? Wasn't it obvious? And the way that theater companies brand themselves is so important to me. Like I will seek it out. Sydney Theater Company is a great example. They've always had some pretty good design, especially in the most recent years. Uh, they, they adopted like this really nice minimal kind of style, both in the photography, the art direction in general. Uh, and they've kept that for like the last five years now. Um, I'm looking forward to a change. I imagine they'll change it up pretty soon, but but for now it's still walking along the, the beautiful Walsh Bay Theatre Precinct here in Sydney and seeing all oh, the fantastic posters. Oh, I just I love it so much. I love going to the theatre. How nice is the theatre? There's also this one from Principal Studio, uh, which is the 2020 to 2021 Theatre Prospero season design. And it's up there with like my favorite projects of all time, right? Like the simple shapes, the colors, how bold it is, the photo manipulation as well. Like everything about it is just uh, this is the dream job for me, right? Like this kind of design is exactly what I would love to spend. If, if I were to spend the rest of my life in graphic design, I would spend it in the theater industry. Okay. That's my, that's true. So yeah. Office privacy. Have a look at these work tents from Steelcase. I'm very curious as to what people think of this. I asked my Instagram audience what people thought, and I, I, it was almost like a 50-50 in terms of like whether people loved them or hated them. Uh, I don't know where I sit anymore. There's a bunch of different type of tents as well. There are some that you can, you can just like straight up pop a little chair in and then use it like as a proper tent. And then there are some that just shield the desk. Um, I would think that I would find it very like, like I need the space, right? Like when I, my old apartment, my desk used to be like cramped in this little corner. And like, I was so like, oh, I hated it. I was so like cramped in and I didn't feel good about it. Um, but like these, are, I, I feel like would give me a similar feeling. So yeah, just, uh, just that's a, that's a design style I feel incredibly passionate about. Can't you tell? Uh, two other styles on my list. Uh, I just wanted to tell you them without making a joke out of them. Uh, I had The Masked Singer. Don't know where I was going to go with that one. I don't write a script for these. I just put down dot points and I expected to be able to talk about them. I got nothing for that one. And then uh, Bus Mascots was the other one, which was meant to be a joke in that I've only ever seen one bus mascot and it is Sabadell's Labussi, uh, which I made a design for in my liked TikToks video. Uh, so that was that. I could have made it. Yeah, I'm not going to make a joke about it. I'm just going to... I just wanted to tell you them that they were there. And that was my seven... That's right, only seven incredibly niche design styles that I'm incredibly passionate about. Hope you enjoyed them. I think the main thing is that I look at like that kind of cartoony style a lot. The Looney Tunes one is especially, that's kind of where I fall into. And I'd like to think that my style is like kind of like trying to be at least like a mix of that and like some bold typography chucked in with some like Bauhaus colors. Even though I don't really, you know, look too much to the Bauhaus for stuff, even though my colors end up being very much Bauhaus, but you know, you get the idea. It's fun. That's the idea, right? Just trying to have fun. I don't know. Not take it too seriously and just chill out. You know, do you know? I think we all know. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This was great. Just got to chill out and stuff. These chatty videos are the best. I'm so glad that the last week's video is doing well. So glad you guys liked that more than the, you know, design. I mean, I still got to do design. Okay. I want to be very clear. I'm still going to do design. I am just going to get I'm probably going to fall into a pattern now of alternating week by week between a design video and talking about design video because I find that a lot easier on my mind, especially when I'm editing, right? Because it's like a nice mix of things. It's not necessarily just like, you know, I just have to edit myself designing, do the same cuts, the same edits, the same music. This is nice. I get to mix it up. I get to make some assets, make some other stuff. It's fun. Yeah. Let me know if you'd like to see some more funny design styles in the future. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I'll see you around. Uh, feel free to come to Design Chef on my Twitch stream at uh, Friday, 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time or Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern... Oh, 8 p.m. Sorry now because of Daylight Saving. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's always a hoot. That's a lot of fun. We've got a lot of great things going on over there. And yeah, more things are, more things are coming. More th cool things, I guess. That's all i got to say. Feel free to subscribe if you want. If that's something you're interested in. Hope you have a lovely end to your week. And I will see you next time for some more Elliot action. 
All right. Thanks for coming. Until next time. See ya.